Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do, because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. It's a new year and time to recalibrate some things. Personally, I know that I need to build a new boundary to live out my value of balance. And I need some accountability on my journey. I'm inviting you to the build a boundary with me workshop. Go to the catchgroup.com slash boundary workshop to grab a spot in this virtual planning session. I'll be facilitating, but I'll also be a participant too. What do you need to recalibrate? Join me in the build a boundary with me workshop. Go grab your spot now at thecatchgroup.com slash boundary workshop. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. We are going to pick up our conversation from last week's episode here today. So if you haven't listened to that episode yet, episode 91, start there because this week's discussion stems from that one. So in last week's discussion, it was centered around a values check-in. That is an exercise that I advise that you do every 90 days or so to check in with what really matters to you. That quarterly check-in allows for a lot of things. One, for sustainability of our values. It helps plan and hold space for showing up for yourself and what's important to you. Two, it allows for changes to be made. Hey, things evolve they change. Some things may become more important or less important over time. That intentional reflection time and that values check-in allows for that evolution. And three, it allows just for reflecting on what's working, what's not, and the room to do something differently in the next 90 days. So at the end of the values check-in, I love that last question. It's a really good one. What will you celebrate And what will you recalibrate? I'm going to use my personal recalibration for my value of balance as a way to model these tools for you. And I'm inviting you on that journey with me. So my values check-in has given me the clarity that I need to recalibrate with more boundaries for that value of balance. And let me just give you a, let's take a step back, I guess. And I want to remind you of the values first framework and the values first framework is highlighted in my book called values first. The V stands for values first. That's where you identify your core values and what matters most. The A stands for audit time where you intentionally understand where you are living and where you are not living your values. What's the gap? The L stands for life boundaries a space to build boundaries that nurture your values. And today we're going to spend some time here talking about the three-step process for building and keeping boundaries. Next in the values first framework is you. The you is for uplifting others. In that section, you model your values to uplift others. And E stands for experience and conflict, which is all about understanding what tools to use when, not if you're experiencing conflict, because you will. So what comes up when you're building new boundaries? Conflict, potentially. So lots of feelings of conflict when trying new behaviors. And then lastly, the last part of the values first framework is sustaining values. So building the skills to sustain your values over the long haul. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about the L in values first framework, which is life boundaries. So I have taught several workshops with leaders on this topic of building boundaries from college students to experienced C-suite executives and really everyone in between kind of in lots of different life stages and career stages. And no matter who you are, I want to tell you this, you need boundaries. 
Boundaries are for everyone. I'm going to say it one more time. Boundaries are for everyone. They aren't just for people who already have their careers established. They aren't just for people that are executive. They aren't just for, you know, certain levels of your career. But I will tell you the earlier that you start, the easier it will be to establish a routine and expectation of boundaries in your life. So you can create boundaries if you work in an achievement driven or competitive company. You can have boundaries if you're a single or if you have a family. You can have boundaries if you have a supportive boss or a jerk for a boss. You can have boundaries if you support a leader in a big leadership position. If you have a team, if you don't have a team, if you are in the workforce or if you're out of the workforce, if you're a student or a leader of a team, or even if you work at the very top leadership position in the company, you can have boundaries. Many women that I coach are in executive roles or have job aspirations of that and think that they have to make huge trade-offs for those top leadership positions. They think that they have to sell their soul for that big job. But no matter how big of the job, I still think that you can have boundaries. It's an exercise in setting priorities based on your values. So you can have a big job, a big impact, and also big boundaries. But you have to build the boundaries. You have to set the priorities. And you have to do it consistently. So when I do these workshops to teach leaders how to build boundaries at work, often... I ask them, what is a boundary? Describe it to me. And oftentimes they say things like it's a wall or it's a barrier or it's a a gate around something, a protection against something. So in 2021, I was a contributing writer to an article in the annual self-care issue of Solacy, a digital magazine. And I wrote the article on this topic, how to build boundaries tied to your values And the way it worked out was I submitted the article and then they built this really beautiful imagery around it within the magazine layout. And when I got it, it inspired me to describe values and boundaries in a different way. And we'll try and link this in the show notes so you can see it for yourself. Um, The magazine in general is just visually stunning. It's a great publication. But the editor titled the article, Find Your Values and Wrap Them Up in Boundaries. I'll describe the imagery here for you. It was a heart in the center with hands wrapped around the heart. So to me, the values are at the center. Those are, that's the heart that's at your core and your hands wrapping around those boundaries, holding them, those form your boundaries. So boundaries are that extra layer of protection of protecting what matters most, not in a barrier, but in an act of extra priority of extra care. Like you're holding them close. Like they're, they're important. They're special. So your boundaries are for you, right? Those are your values. They're not for other people. They're for you. They are there for you to help you prioritize those values. So in that lens, I want to share the three steps to building and setting a boundary that you can keep. One is tie it to a value Two, set up a system. And the third step, is to celebrate consistently. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the importance of the first step here, tying it to a value. So I'm an adjunct professor. I teach classes at a university in organizational psychology. And one of the things that I get to teach about is motivation at work. So I'm going to break down kind of the sciencey part of this process. Let me nerd out here for a minute. So why is this the first step of the process to the three steps of building boundaries and why does this even work? So the one theory that I want to teach to you about today is on motivation, specifically extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. So in extrinsic motivation, your motivation originates from outside of you. So for instance, the motivation to do a good job at work the example might be to, is to get an extra bonus. So your motivation is that bonus. So that's an example of an extrinsic motivation An intrinsic motivation. Your motivation originates from inside of you. For instance, at work, it might be doing really great work because it's personally rewarding. So you're motivated by the feeling that positive feeling that you get by doing purpose-driven work. So the first step of the 
setting a boundary process is to tie the boundary to a value. So your values are something that are, are important to you personally. By tying your boundary to a value, you are f- taking that first step and wrapping your hands around it to care for it. You're also creating a link to intrinsic motivation. Your motivation will be the positive feeling that you get from living your value that you care about. Let me tell you, behavior change is hard, y'all. And building boundaries is behavior change. So it will be hard at first, or at least at the very least uncomfortable because you're, you'll be doing something new. And I want you to ground yourself in that value and link that boundary to that value so that you can remind yourself of why you're doing it. And you'll be more motivated to do the boundary and change your behavior because it's intrinsically motivating to you. The example that I gave in episode 91, the thing that I want to recalibrate is linked to my value of balance. I want to build new boundaries to wrap my hands around my value of balance to care for myself. And by changing behaviors, that will increase my balance. That will most likely have to do with something around a nighttime routine or less time on digital devices or looking at screens. So I know these are going to be hard things to do. They will be uncomfortable to change. So next, I want to ask you, after your values check in, what do you need to recalibrate? What value do you need to care for most? How will you wrap your hands around it? Around you. What will those boundaries look like? What are you going to try? So that's step one of the three steps of building a boundary. The first one is tie it to a value. The second is setting up a system. And the third is celebrating consistency. So I want to build my new boundaries with you. I want to care for my values, specifically my value of balance with you. And I want you to join me. We are going to continue this conversation in the build a boundary with me workshop happening next week. I want you to go to the catchgroup.com slash boundary workshop to grab your spot in the workshop. If you are anything like me, you need some accountability. I will be facilitating the workshop, but I will also be a participant too. So grab your spot for the build a boundary with me workshop at the catchgroup.com slash boundary workshop. I cannot wait to go on this journey with you. Remember, your leadership belongs here. You belong in the C-suite. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. Editing and support for the podcast is done by S&E Podcast Management. To get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values, go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care. Thank you.